Okay, well, hello, everybody. Um, right now, it's about 12.35 on Wednesday. Um, welcome to our course, Job Placement Supportive Employment, CSNL 6380. Um, you know, let's just start off with how this course is going to operate. Um, as you know, due to the COVID-19, everything has really changed. This has was originally scheduled to be an on-campus course, which there are no more on-campus courses. So now it's an online course. And what we're going to be doing is having one to two video lectures each week. Um, if this course would have been offered last year, for example, um, it was this basically on the books as the same way, two times meeting on campus a week, but I do, did it as a hybrid course, if you will, meaning one video lecture and one meeting on campus per week. Now, you know, since that cannot occur because of COVID-19, this course was moved to all online. Um, right now, we have three students in the course, and I think a fourth will be joining us. And quite frankly, when I saw the enrollment, I didn't even know if we were going to run this course because it was so low. Um, you know, people have other things going on right now. And just to let you know, like for an uh, campus course or say since we're online now if you would have less than 10 students then usually the course would be canceled for an online course um, and if they still wanted the teacher or the, or the department still wanted to run it then the teacher would be paid a fraction of what the normal payment would be so in other words if you needed 10 for an online course and there was five then the teacher would get paid half of the normal rate now Originally, when I saw the numbers, I was like, let's just cancel this course because, you know, I have so much to do. I probably am working 40, 50, 60 hours a week just on our KCREP accreditation for all the programs in counseling and human development, PhD, master's, rehab, clinical, and school. Um, but I was informed that some of you need this to graduate or had it, have, have it for different reasons. So bit the bullet and we're just going to run this course right now with three hopefully we'll have four but we'll, we'll see so it's going to be a small class um so essentially each week i will be putting up video lectures probably one to two times a week depending on how the class progresses and what i'm thinking about doing is since we have such a small course is we're going to cover all the same content but we will probably have one original video lecture like this, probably posted Tuesday-ish, Wednesday-ish, some, somewhere like that near the beginning to the middle of the week. I'll have to take a look at the other video lectures from last summer. Um, and I think that, uh, I mean, I know they cover all the same content, but I think the only differences would be is that if there's, say, 15 students on the course and we're talking about question X, Y, or Z, you might see some of the video lectures um, saying, okay, Bobby, we don't have any men in this class, say, Bobby asked this question about blah, blah, blah. It would, again, it's going to be exactly the same content, the exactly the same assignments. It would just maybe be, oh, someone sent me an email and here's an answer to that question. That might be a little different, but that's not going to harm anything. Um, so like our course says, job placement, support, and employment. Um, just to give you a little background on me, I started as a part-time assistant rehabilitation counselor in 1989 in the private sector. My background has always been in the private sector, with the exception of doing pro bono work now for veterans, doing clinical mental health, rehabilitation, and career counseling. Um, and then also I spent um, a year and a half, or practical half a year, internship one year, at Maryland Doors, that's the Division of Rehabilitation Services. Um, that's the state agency in Maryland, like in Virginia, it's DARS, and DC, it's DCRSA, and so on. So one of the goals that I'm gonna have in this class is to tell you the difference of how job placement is, is in private, public, and then there's a third area, forensic, which basically means you don't have the day-to-day -day case management and dealing with you know, getting your client surgeries approved or talking to their teachers or finding them jobs or whatever. Forensic is strictly, I do my evaluation, I test them, I write a report, and then I might go to court and then my involvement's done. Um, so I'm going to try to tell you how job placement for the different sectors will operate. For example, in the private sector, 
job placement is essentially how you're compensated for your work, meaning you could be the greatest counselor in the world and your clients and consumers can love you, but if you're not getting people back to work, then you're going to be looking for a job because that is how you're measured and that's how you're compensated. Now, the public sector is a little different than that. Yes, job placement is important, but it doesn't mean if you don't place anybody in the next six months or year, that doesn't mean you're going to be fired, which in the pub private sector it probably would mean you'd be fired or let go. So if you have the syllabus, maybe if you haven't printed it out or haven't looked at it yet, um, make it available because we're going to go through the syllabus right now and explain how the course is going to run. So you can see on page one the course purpose. We're going to go through a lot of things like the American with Disabilities Act, um, the Workforce and Innovation Opportunity Act, the Rehab Act of 73 and the amendments, um, and so on. Because these things, especially for the public sector, will dictate who qualifies for services, when will they receive services, and things of that nature. Now in the private sector, one of the things, really the main thing that dictates if you're going to get services are who's paying for them. You know, in the public sector, you need to qualify with a level of disability. The private sector, it's money. So if someone's paying for your rehabilitation, then you're getting services. Um, so you can see on page one, the learning outcomes we're going to go through. I mean, job placement, I have 30 years experience doing it. So I think I could be able to give you the basics of that. Um, talk about different job placement strategies, skills, um, approaches. Um, one thing that's really important, more probably in the private sector, but the pri public sector is moving more in this direction, are employers' concerns. You know, dealing with, you know, what are the employers' um, things that they're going to be thinking about when you're trying to help a person with a disability obtain employment at XYZ Corporation. Um, we're going to talk about different things that you will do, basically, like um, there's different strategies like on-the-job training. There's different types of activities like job analysis, labor market surveys. Um, you know, we're going to talk about the how the level of disability will affect or certain diagnoses will affect what types of strategies we might decide to employ with our clients um, and things of that nature. Now on page two, you're going to see all the KCREP standards. One thing about KCREP is no matter who teaches the course, where it's offered, you have to cover certain bases and you'll see the different areas that we're going to be covering and then not only like what the topic is, then you'd have the standard and then what assignment actually hits that. So like for the first one, um, education and employment needs, labor market information and so on, that's KCREP standard 5H2K and the labor market survey will cover that base and so on. Uh, on page three, Szymanski and Parker is the text we're going to be utilizing. Um, work in disability context issues strategies for enhancing employment outcomes is a text. Um, the first four chapters are in the files section. So that should get you through the first two weeks or so. Um, so and then, of course, I'm going to be adding other articles and handouts. And um, one of the things that students really like are redacted real cases. So for a lot of the courses I teach, whatever topic X is, I'll try to find a report or something that covers that, a real report, and then just redact it, taking out all the names and things like that. So you can really see in the real world, this is how it is. Um, and again, depending on what sector, public, private, it, it, things are going to be a little different. You'll have the same counseling skills, but you'll have different roles, responsibilities, compensation, and things of that nature. Um, so everything's going to be an APA. Really, the seventh edition's out, but the sixth edition's fine for me. Um, you know, turn your work in on time. You can see that the policy is a half a letter grade reduced each business day. It's late. But if there's something like, you know, grandma's sick or something happened, just let me know. And the key is ahead of time, not a week later. Oh, I didn't turn that in because, you know, my dog got hit by a car or whatever happened. Uh, students with disabilities, I'm, you know, I'm a rehabilitation counselor at heart. I'll bend over backwards to give you anything that you need. So we have that. Um, attendance, you know, really this is kind of interesting. The one reason why, and this is kind of like a question that I had from someone yesterday, was, okay, do we have to be online at this specific time that the schedule of classes says this class is supposed to meet? And the answer is no. 
you're going to have these video lectures to watch whenever is convenient for you. The way I'm going to structure the course is each week we're going to have a certain amount of activities that we need to take care of. So it's up to you if you watch the video lectures, you know, the beginning of the week, end of the week, on the weekend. You know, there's going to be due dates, as you can see, like in the project section or in the syllabus for certain assignments. But besides that, when you do the work is up to you, which probably with everything going on, that's probably a better thing for you, I would imagine. Now, for the course evaluation, um, your weekly discussion questions those are going to be due. Now for this course I've reduced them to just six. Usually we would have two a week. So that's one break I've already given you right there. Um, so those will be 10 points each or 60 points for those. The resume and cover letter, that's an easy assignment. You probably have, a, have it done. That's 20 points. The website review is 20. Labor market survey, 20. Job analysis, 20. The final project's 40 and the final exam is 20 for a grand total of 200 points. 96 and above is an A. Let's not even talk about below that because my goal, honestly, for every one of you is to get an A in this course, but you can see the grading scale there. So for the weekly discussion questions, how I usually like to run these is let's make the weekly discussion question due by Sunday at midnight. Then that way, because what I like to do is each person will put up a mini, it's like a mini APA paper, one to two type pages, so double space, so really one page. Um, and you will, whatever the topic is, you're going to give, cite some facts in each paragraph, let's say two pages. There's probably going to be four solid paragraphs, double space. So for each of the paragraphs, I'd like to have at least one citation in APA format, meaning we also need a reference list and a cover page. Those don't count for the two pages or that's it. You would have no narrative. Um, and then on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, read your fellow students DQs and just make some informal feedback. And that could be, it's of course not an APA format. It could just be a sentence or two. I liked what you said, or you know, I had a client and I tried this, or who knows, whatever your opinion is, that's for you guys to have like an integrated learning environment as best we can online. Um, so those will be due weekly. Resume and cover letter, again, that goes without saying. You probably have one. That will be uploaded due May 31st via Blackboard, and you'll go into the project section and just upload it like an email attachment. Website reviews, um, you're going to review two websites and also have a close eye for accessibility, meaning what if I'm a person with a vision impairment or hearing impairment? Is the website accessible? And so on. Um, those will be two to three pages for each website due June the 7th, so we got a little time for that. Labor market survey, um, you know, we'll talk about this more in detail, but what a labor market survey does. Say I'm in the private sector and I did my evaluation and I have Johnny or Jane that wants to go to school to work on computers or to be a web designer. Who knows what? It doesn't really matter what they want to do. What a labor market survey, there's really, from my perspective, there's two things that need to be positive before we're going to talk about doing this retraining and coming up with, in the private sector, rehabilitation plan, in the public sector, IPE, Individualized Plan for Employment. Because in the private sector, a rehabilitation plan, we're going to, it's a contract, and we're going to hold it to you like a contract. In the public sector, you can change your IPE many, many times, and it's a lot more flexible. But in the private sector, you're going to be signing it, your attorney is going to be signing it, the insurance company's attorney is going to be signing it, I'm going to be signing it, and we're going to hold all parties to their responsibilities. Now, a big difference between public and private is, is in the private sector, when they are working with me, they are being paid to be my client by the insurance company. That's a very different thing than in the public sector. Now, along with that, comes all the attorneys and insurance companies and all the other headaches from a rehab counselor standpoint you've got to deal with. But what a labor market survey would do is, okay, we want to train Johnny and X. Are the jobs out there? That's what a labor market survey will find out. Where are the jobs? What are they paying? What kind of benefits? What are employers looking for? Because if the jobs do not exist, then we are not going to waste any time training someone for a job as a buggy whip manufacturer or an elevator operator because those jobs just don't exist anymore. It's a waste of time. We're not doing it. A job analysis is the other part of that. Can they physically, mentally, emotionally do the job? Because again, part A, are the jobs there? Labor market survey. 
Part B, job analysis, can they do it? If both of those are not yes, then we're not going down the retraining road because it's just not going to work. It's going to be a waste of time, money, and in effect, it's going to harm the client because it sets them further and further away from their goal of suitable gainful employment. So job analysis, you'll actually go out to the site and observe the job and complete a form and submit it to the surgeon or physical therapist or physician and get their approval before my person goes to work at that job. That's another difference between public and private. In the private sector, you need to do everything perfectly, dot the I's, cross the T's, because if I send that person into that job and they re-injure themselves, they already got an attorney. They're already involved in a lawsuit. Guess what? Guess who's soon getting sued next? Me. So in the private sector, things are a little bit differently because of attorneys. And, and again, it kind of goes back to what are the rules of the road? For the public sector, it's going to be the federal and state laws and regulations. In the uh, private sector, there are 50 different states, 50 different laws. I mean, it's a totally different ballgame. Uh, the final project, that's going to essentially be a vocational assessment. I'm going to try to teach you how to write an evalu assessment or evaluation or similar. Usually an assessment is a shorter document. The vocational evaluations that I do now are probably 15, 20, 25 pages on a person. When I was starting off like in your age, like in the 20s and 30s, the vocational assessment probably was like five, six, seven pages because it's a different type of um, evaluation. And then the final exam, um, it's going to be a case study essentially that will tie together everything that we talked about in this course. So what are we going to do this week? So for this week, we'll have chapters one and two. And again, if you look at the course schedule, it's kind of broken down between, I think, let me check the dates right now. It's like, uh, let's see, 21. I just picked the days at random, so it doesn't really matter what, what the dates are. I'll try to get my calendar to pop up here. So May 21st, so that'd be Thursday, Friday. So, so Thursday and Saturday. I mean, those are just, and, and real, real, that's kind of up to you when you want to watch these. So don't like hold these things as, oh, I got to do it on the 21st or I got to do it on the 23rd. It's not like that. It's just for week one, how I would look at this, and I'm looking at my second computer here. For week one, I know that I have to knock out chapters one and two. Then my discussion question on the weekend, do Sunday at midnight, will be on those reading materials. And then sprinkled throughout the course will be these other main assignments that we have. Um, so that is the syllabus in a nutshell. Let me pull up our class webpage real quick. Um, if you, I've tried to update, let me see if the other things need updating. Well, I need to update the course outline. So on the syllabus, the weekly schedule, if you will, has been updated, but in the outline, I still need to update that. So I will, uh, let's see files. If you go into the file section, there's going to be a lot of cool stuff in there. You can see the, the first four chat or yeah, one, two, three, four, the first four chapters are up there. Um, there's a good article on labor market methodology. Um, there's some examples of a labor market survey, a job analysis, a vocational assessment. There's a lot of good resources in there that you can take a look at. For example, the IPEs. These are the training materials from the state of Maryland that say you got your CRC and you graduated from GW. They have their own training program of how you're going to work at the state agency and these are the documents that you would have been trained on. So they might be um, a couple years old, but it's going to be the same thing. And these will help you in your assignments. One of the things I really try to do is to try to make this course as applied as possible, meaning the stuff that I'm going to teach you in this class is what you're going to be able to go out in the real world and make money. Um, that's kind of a good thing, right? So that's what the course will really focus on. So let's go to discussion questions. So for this first week, it relates to chapter one, um, and it's talking about some of the you know variables that affect you know things that a rehabilitation counselor will have to take into account when they are doing an evaluation and planning for the client's future, like disability. You know, say if it's vision impairment, does a person need glasses or are they blind? Or say if it's an orthopedic injury, did the person you know have five failed back surgeries or was it a, you know a pulled muscle? 
you know, there's whatever the diagnosis is, that's one of the things about rehabilitation counseling is there's going to be a range or a variance to the severity of said condition. So for this one, you're going to um, discuss variables like race, disability, gender, culture, maybe even geography, an effect, you know, how people participate in the United States labor market. That's DQ1. Um, DQ2 will be on chapter four and relate to like different job placement strategies and theories and things like that. And then we'll just keep rolling on. So again, for this week by Sunday midnight, please post your original discussion question one, then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, fellow students. I mean, right now we got three. So if, if the other students join, then all you have to do is look at two other DQs, maybe three DQs, and then a couple informal sentences. Hey, hey, Mary, I like this, or John, I, you know, I would try this, and so on. Um, if you go into the projects, I think I updated it. Yep, these are all updated. So you'll have the dates for the five main assignments in our course. Um, and I think really the bottom line is if you just start reading the first two chapters, knock out DQ1 this weekend, um, we'll be, we should be in good shape and just keep progressing as needed. And of course, if you ever need anything, let me know. You know, we got a small class, which is good and bad. But, you know, if you need something, I'll get you personal attention within 24 hours without a doubt. So that is everything for today. If you guys, you know, have any questions about how the course is going to run, you need something, please let me know. Um, but do work on getting your textbook for this class. It's something that you'll probably use for the rest of your career. And I look forward to working with each and every one of you. So you guys have a great day and I'll talk to you soon.